A few years ago, when the State Board of Education in the state of Kansas in the United States uh, was debating whether or not to adopt certain standards that would require intelligent design being taught along neo-Darwinian evolutionary theory in high school classrooms, um, a certain fellow made a sort of mockery of this by imagining that the flying spaghetti monster, which is a sort of conglomeration of spaghetti with two meatball eyes, uh, was the one who's responsible for creating uh, life in the universe. And he used this as a parody to say that if intelligent design should be taught, then uh, the flying spaghetti monster has an equal claim to be taught in Kansas schools, which is obviously absurd. Now, in fact, this wasn't really a very good parody because the proponents of intelligent design insist that they are not identifying the intelligent designer as God. They freely admit and insist that to be the intelligent designer of the cosmos does not require such properties as omniscience, omnipotence, omnibenevolence, and so forth. So that paradoxically, the flying spaghetti monster parody was actually an instance of intelligent design. It would be an intelligent design hypothesis, but one that would be unjustified because it would attribute all sorts of specific properties to the intelligent designer, which could not be inferred from the phenomena to be explained, namely biological complexity. So in fact, the parody was really rather misconceived despite the popularity that uh, the Flying Spaghetti Monster uh, received on, on the internet. Now what I would argue is that there are arguments for the existence of God based on things like the origin of the universe, uh, the design of the fine tuning of the initial conditions of the Big Bang, the moral argument for God's existence, which show that, in fact, the creator and designer of the universe cannot be a flying spaghetti monster. Uh, one reason, very simply, is a flying spaghetti monster is a physical object. It is a material object extended in space and time, and therefore it cannot be the cause of the Big Bang, because the cause of the Big Bang has to exist beyond space and time and be the creator of all matter and energy in the universe which come into existence at the initial cosmological singularity. So the cause of the universe has to be an immaterial, timeless, spaceless being which transcends the universe and brings it into existence. And therefore the flying spaghetti monster hypothesis is simply inept as an explanation of the origin of the universe, not to speak of the fine tuning of the laws of nature to which this flying spaghetti monster would himself be subject. So. The, the parody is, is a silly one, and it does really nothing to undercut the standard arguments for a transcendent creator and designer of the universe, which enable us to deduce several of the properties of this being, which are theologically significant and consonant with the classical concept of God. Yeah.